DEF CON convention. This meeting was held in exciting Las Vegas, Nevada from July 9th through the 11th, 1999. This is video tape number 38, the DEF CON proxy server. Um, it's an interesting story on how it came up at first. Me and a friend of mine were at Comdex two years ago, right here in Las Vegas, and uh, we were looking at this vendor who had a, a context or a content uh, sensitive uh, filtering device, and we couldn't get to any porn sites. We didn't want to go to any porn sites, but the, the thing was if you could get skin on a page, you would. Uh, you would get this teddy bear with bondage on it, or with bondage gear on it, and that's what we really wanted. Uh, we wanted the teddy bear, we wanted to bring it home. How many of y'all use the DEF CON proxy server? How many of y'all think it sucks? Well, that's good. <laughs> anyway, what happened is we tried everything we could to get past this device, and uh, what, what we eventually tried to do was go to this site that was basically all images and no text. And even by IP address, we couldn't get past this device. So it kind of planted a seed with me, and I wanted to, uh, to see if I could do something to get around this. So I started playing with proxy servers. And what we're going to talk about today is exactly what is a proxy, because this is the newbie track, but I'm sure most of y'all know what a proxy is, because most of y'all already use it. Why use a proxy server? Why would you want to use such a device? Is it really anonymous, which is a, a, a big issue for you guys, I know. And a new access policy. Um, there's some things that have come up uh, in terms of present resources that we have available to us. And uh, just network utilization, so there's going to be some policy changes to the, uh, to the proxy server. But uh, don't be alone, we're still going to offer with some basic free access. Exactly what is a proxy? Well, in networking or computing, a proxy is a device that separates you from a third party. There are web proxies, there are telnet proxies, FTP proxies, uh, but because uh, web browser is the predominant application on the internet, uh, you'll see web proxies more, more often than that. And this is a high level topology of how uh, a regular or uh, a non-proxied uh, uh, web sessions just go. You have Dilbert, Porn Surfer, or just Hacker down there at the bottom, and you have a home user up there at the top. And what happens is direct TCP connections are made on port 80 or, or any other uh, web port, but the common published ports are, are 80, and for SSL it's 443. And you go directly over to the porn sites. And that's kind of intrusive because you can pass environments over there, your, your email address, things like that, IP address, where, who you are basically, where you came from and where you come from in terms of what ISP you're using. What the DEF CON proxy does is it acts as an intermediary device. If you'll see the, uh, I'll call, I'll call the, uh, the segment over to your left, to the left side of the proxy server, segment A, and we'll call the one on the left, segment B. On segment B, the, dot, the uh, green dotted lines, the proxy server will take your request and then it'll go to the site for you bring back all the data, and then rewrite the pages and display them to you. And when it does that, uh, it rewrites the link. So any subsequent link that you press on thereafter will force you through a proxy server. So you don't have to worry about that. There's some things when there's an FTP link or, or an email link, uh, and it's going to make you leave the proxy. Uh, it'll warn you before that. You know, it'll give you the link in case you do want to go there anyway. The real, well, a lot, a lot of issues where people were writing, you know, it's, it's you know, URLs were showing up in, in uh, corporate proxy filters, and uh, they were they were concerned that their boss or the government might be able to 
to uh, view the traffic that was going over there because it, it is an anonymous. It's anonymous from the also the proxy to the to the uh, destination website, but it's not at all anonymous uh, between also and you. Um, and even the red dotted lines on segment A show that it's an encrypted uh, session. But even though it's an encrypted, it's not really anonymous. From here, your boss, which is uh, the company you work for, the ISP, the government, they can still tell that you're going to the proxy server, but because the session is encrypted, they can't read your traffic, which uh, for some of you is very important also. And another thing that the, uh, that the encrypted version of the uh, uh, DEF CON proxy uh, Serves is that uh, it blows through content filtering devices, which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to blow through content uh, devices. That was my uh, original goal because I wanted to get past that, that device. So if your boss is going to let you go out on 443, uh, which is uh, the SSL port, and you can make it to the DEF CON proxy server, you're going to be able to pretty much get whatever you want. What happens is you go out destination port 443, and then the uh, DEF CON proxy server will go out destination 80. So you can visit non-SSL sites by using SSL on all servers. I'm sorry, DEF CON. It used to be all servers, and uh, it became a part of the DEF CON organization not too long ago. You know who that is? That's DT on top of the, uh, the, the, the Grand Plaza Hotel uh, in Taiwan. I talked him out of jumping. Why use a proxy server? Anonymity. You might want to remain anonymous. That's the biggest reason for all of you guys. Um, also, we started uh, in, the, in the beginning when we were doing this. What, what happened is this turned out as something I wanted to do, and then I told a couple of friends about it, and the couple of friends told a couple of friends, and then Jericho put it on attrition.org, and then Jericho uh, or DT put it on the uh, on the DEFCON site. So this isn't something that was that was programmed on purpose. This was well, it was programmed on purpose, but it wasn't engineered. This is not, not something that was planned to be rolled out to millions and millions of people. And it is millions and millions of people, believe it or not. I know it's Sunday and it's early and uh, turnout's kind of low. But on the Tuesday that we stopped logging this service, which was about four weeks ago when we stopped testing it, we, we basically logged to see where people were going. We didn't care who you were. We wanted to know why you used the proxy server. And the vast majority, I'm talking like 90% of you guys, use it for porn. I'm serious. Not a lot. I mean, we, we saw people rooting around in CGI bins and, and going to government sites and stuff like that, but the vast majority of you guys use it for porn. And what I was going to do today is uh, I, was I set out last night on, on a mission to go look for the little teddy bear with, uh, with bondage on it, but I couldn't find it. Um, so what I did is, we have goodies today, by the way. In honor of Iowa, where the proxy server is based out of, I got y'all an inflatable pig blow-up doll. You're a lucky guy. But anonymity is, is the biggest reason why a person would want to use a proxy server, we guess, we assume. The second one is you're forced. You might not have a choice to use a proxy server. If you're in a corporate environment and you're sitting on your company land, um, they may have a, a proxy server that they force you to go through. Um, and the reason that they do that is, well, there's a couple of reasons they might want to do it. As a consultant, I can tell you that I'll go into a, a company and I'll recommend a caching uh, proxy server which caches uh, and stores web pages locally. So uh, it, it appears, the perception is, is that it, all subsequent uh, accesses are faster, but it really isn't. Uh, well, it is faster because it's coming from the local segment. And what you do by implementing a caching proxy server is you is you can lower the utilization on your WAN link, which is very important because if you go to a company and, for example, the company's WAN link, say the public internet connection is a T1 and it costs $2,700 a month, if you tell them that you can cut down on the utilization uh, of their WAN link and put off upgrading that, that line for another year or so, that would say, you know, tens of thousands of dollars over you know, a period of a year. And you get a big yawn when you tell them that. But 
Another reason that they force you to go through a proxy, and probably the real reason, is if you go to the HR director and you tell them by implementing a caching proxy server that you can spy on your employees and see where they're going and, and, and back up the pages that they go to, well then you get the PO sign in like 30 seconds. Bypass restrictions. You go to my, my have a firewall or filter based on content, I'm sorry, a firewall, have a firewall or filter based on content or site destination. And this is really popular with countries like Cuba, China, Russia. They don't want you to go to the CNN site. They don't want you to go to the American government site. And I'm not saying that you can come to America and get the real story. I'm just saying that they can go come to America and get the other side of the story. And they can make a decision uh, uh, based on uh, what they've learned. And uh, I recently got a letter from a guy in Russia who said that he really, really likes the proxy server and he uses it all the time. <clears throat> And he sent that to me in email. He said that he uses the encrypted version because he can bypass the, uh, the government that way. And uh, what happened is, is he sent it to me in clear text email. So he used the encrypted version of the proxy. Then he tell, sends me the email in clear text. So I envisioned like the, the government going there and uh, you know, I killed him a couple of minutes later because I, I responded to him. I never got back. Who knows who that is? Microsoft? Here. I don't want to throw it, it's to, you want it? You don't? It's a jack-off glove. <laughs> Anybody else want it? No? Yeah, it's a proxy glove. It's a proxy for your hand. Okay. I got better prizes as we go along. Well, hold on a second. You want the pleasure cups instead? Okay. I can't throw them, Mr. Harry. Is it really anonymous? No, but I feel that we've made a, a, a good effort in that part. Um, the best effort, actually, that we can do, I think. Uh, it's encrypted. Um, your boss still knows where you're going, but even more importantly to some of you guys is between all server, sorry, the DEF CON proxy server and uh, and you, there's, there's no way to control who's going to be monitoring that, who's going to be uh, sniffing that. Even though they can't see your data, they know that you're using the, uh, the server. Um, and the government, I think, can uh, brute force that encryption, but I don't think your boss can. So if you're, if you're going to use it for porn sites, I, I think you're fine. But if you're up to no good, who knows? Whoops. The clear text version of the proxy is anonymous, as you know from the web server point of view. And the encrypted version is anonymous to the web server as well. And like I just said, uh, they can still snip your traffic, but they can't read it. So a lot of people, I, I don't want y'all to get the uh, impression that it's anonymous from you uh, to also even though it's encrypted, it's not. It's just, it's, uh, they can see your traffic still. And that's Bill, and nobody wants to jack off Bill, that's okay. The DEF CON proxy server is now part of the DEF CON organization. Uh, and what that means is yeah, it's going to have a DEF CON uh, URL, and uh, it's going to be based out of Seattle. We're going to move it from Iowa. Believe it or not, the proxy server is running on a Pentium 75 with 32 megs of RAM, running free BSD. And, uh, getting beat to death right now. I'm drawing pictures of machine almost dies. So we're, we're going to upgrade the machine. It's, it's going to go on a dual pending machine. And it's going to go to a place where we have our Ethernet connectivity to a DS3. We will continue to offer the clear text version of the proxy server. And that's not correct. We're still going to offer the encrypted version as well for free uh, as a community service. And uh, we're going to limit the bandwidth. I think we're going to... We're going to start off at 256, and I think we're willing to go up to 512K uh, for the proxy server, for the free services. So you're always going to be able to get in, you're always going to be able to use it for free, but sometimes it's going to be kind of slow during peak times. Yes. For what? What do you, what do you use it for? What do you use it for? If you don't mind saying.
be able to do that. And we have a way of separating them, but it's going to be a, an economic mechanism. I'll get to that. So we're going to continue to offer that for free. The encrypted version of the blah, 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 and some other Nito or Nito new features uh, will cost a nominal fee per year. And like I said, that's not accurate because we're also going to offer encrypted for free. But on limited pipe, not full blown DS3. The new domain will be DEF CON net. We covered that. And what you'll get is you'll get access to all web proxies. Well, also, you can be able to open up an account with us, and your email address will be at defcon.net, and we're going to have a Hotmail, well, actually, it's already done. It's a Hotmail type of interface, and it's going to be through SSL. So you can send clear text email, but you, you, can, you can go to defcon and uh, author that email via your web browser, and it'll be encrypted. And we're also going to have Telnet and FTP proxies and they're going to be authenticated using your DEF CON uh, net login. Because a, a lot of people actually are requested to Telnet, not so much the FTP, but a lot of people are requested to Telnet proxy. The membership is going to be $50 per year. Um, we're going to donate some of that uh, to uh, either EFF or uh, EPIC. So uh, it's going to go to a good cause, any leftover that we have. But uh, mostly, we, we did this to try to separate the people who are, who are looking uh, for free porn, actually. Uh, we don't know if it's going to work. And because this is an, a, a... Do you think so? I'm sorry? Well, no, I, I know, we just, uh, well, also the, the, the sign-up's going to be kind of painful, so the porn guys are kind of instant, it's an impulse buy, you know, they can, they can sign up on the net and it's just instant access. So we think that because the sign-up's going to be kind of painful, because the sign-up also has to be anonymous. If you pay me with a credit card or a 900 number, you know, the, the PTT is going to log that 900 call, or, you know, the, the credit card's going to have to be billed somewhere, so it's still not anonymous. So what's going to happen is, well, later on, in this slide, I think it is. We say that you're going to have to pay over there at the registration booth, but we're not going to do that. We're going to have a secure form, and on this form, all you're going to do is give us a name and a password, and you're going to hit the submit button, and then the form is going to return the address, which is basically uh, DEF CON, uh, uh, Jeff Moss, and you're going to send the money to him, and when the money gets there, um, then we enable the account. And uh, we're hoping that you guys will do that via money order and just write your username in the memo section of the money order. And uh, like I said, all of this is subject to change because we're not a big corporation. This, we're very nimble. We can, if it doesn't work, it, we're just going to have to fix it some kind of way. Tell us how these assumptions play out. I might. Well, some things we have to address, though, because, like you said, the guy in China can't afford 50 bucks, or I would just have a hard time getting get into it. I mean, there's, there's currency issues, and you know, can he walk into a 7-Eleven and get a money order? No, that's, quite frankly, that's something that we didn't think of. And uh, like I said, this isn't something that was engineered. This is something. This wasn't something that was supposed to be rolled out as a product sometime. I'm not slamming you. No, no I, I understand. Right. Internationally, it probably won't play out very well. And here domestically, you, you bring up a good point, but I, I don't think a lot of porn servers are going to go through the trouble of signing up to use it. And and. You know, if somebody's paying for the bandwidth and they, they send us fifty dollars per year and it's popular and uh, and makes a million or two dollars a year, and you know, we're just looking to subsidize some of the network utilization. So if we can take money off the top and send it to EFF or Epic, that's a good thing, don't you all think? We have, we, I, I talk with David Sobel a lot with Epic. Uh, EFF has never approached us on anything, um, but you, you, that's a good point as well, you know. Uh, I, I know that they do good legislative work and good lobbying work and stuff like that, but, you know, they get donations, and if somebody is a significant contributor to their cause, then, yeah, maybe they can sponsor some of, our, some of the people who want to use it internationally. Forget that. There was no printer here, that's the reason for that, basically. 
It's scheduled for rollout at 9.15, and all present services will remain free until rollout. And it may be early. That's, that's just something I came up with off the top of my head. I got to go home and kick the dog and uh, kiss my wife and uh, take a rest and go back to work. But I think I'm going to have it out by 9.15. And here's the present URLs and the past URLs. I'm sorry, the present and the future. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, so after the 15th, uh, you can just go to freeproxy.defcon.net or proxy.defcon.net for the paying services. And if you want to write uh, uh, the guys who run it uh, email, just send them an uh, email to proxy.defcon.net. And that's it. Q&A. I'm sorry? Wait, just leave it right here. Okay. Did I get no less? Oh, this presentation is going to be available. I don't have my speaker notes. There's so much more I want to tell you guys. But this presentation will be available on the DEF CON proxy server site. So you can download it and take a look at the speaker notes. And y'all can go, oh, yeah, that wouldn't have went over really well at all. There we go. OK, guys. I can't hear you, sir. Those addresses are the site, uh, but the, the present. Oh, oh, yeah, for the new URLs and the uh, addresses, we're going to put something up. You can expect to see all of this uh, Monday night. Uh, no, uh, on uh, DC's uh, hyphen proxy dot also dot net. Yeah, that's the present URL. Questions? Okay, who wants a copy of FreeBSD 3.2? Who knows what URL is? Yeah. Nope, not research. Yeah, we got it. And if anybody wants the Jack Globe, y'all can just come up and get it. I'm sorry? I'm sorry, this is in jeopardy. <laughs> Universal, I think. Universal. Wait, wait, yeah, hold on a second. Anybody want the pleasure cups? No, oh, really? Okay. All right. Thank y'all very much for coming out this early. I appreciate it.